Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video I wanted to talk about two things. Firstly drawing something that you're unfamiliar with that you've never tackled drawing before and secondly drawing from an in inadequate photograph. So every now and again we'll have our phone with us or our camera and we'll just get the chance to snap something really quickly but it isn't a great picture but we might still want to work from it. So the other day um, it was very very sunny and this little hedgehog was in the garden. So it's a bit overexposed because it was just with my phone camera and also this little hedgehog was running around very quickly so I didn't get chance to get a really good focused picture of it. And I've just printed this off on my home computer straight from the phone app. So I haven't shared this um, you know, on my reference photos page or anything like that because it's not clear enough but I'd still like to draw it because I've not got um, any drawings of hedgehogs. I've never tried drawing a hedgehog before and this little one keeps popping up in the garden which is great because they eat all your slugs and snails and so I would like to have a go at drawing him or her. I think it's maybe a her um, because they come out during the day. They're actually nocturnal but they do come out during the day when they're feeding the young so I'm assuming it's a, a female. So the good thing about this is we've got this fantastic shadow which shows us the shape of a nose because that's very distinctive in hedgehogs is this shape of the nose so before you even start thinking about drawing something and this doesn't have to be an animal or a person it could be anything a mug a, whatever you're drawing whatever's in front of you before you start um, with your drawing have a look at the basic shapes that are there so the shadow's obviously very long because the sun's presumably from this side which it would be, would be at that time of day in my garden um, and so it's cast this long shadow with the, the nose which she's got turned up because she was actually looking directly at me. We can just about see the ears and we've got quite a round shape to that head there but the mane of the head is obviously underneath all these spines um, and everything's going backwards, all the spikes are going backwards and she's got a very round body as well. So we'd set off with those two main shapes of the head and the body and a little nose and eyes obviously going to fit into that. So we're not going to be able to put all the detail in because it's such a poor fo poorly focused picture but we can get a feel for it and for the shapes and have a go at drawing her. So, and actually sometimes now and again it's quite good to work from a photograph that isn't that great because it makes you think a little bit more and it makes you look more at where the lines are um, and it also makes you less photorealistic in your drawing. You can be a little bit looser when you haven't got all that detail to worry about. So the paper that I'm using today is this Bokken for Block and it's £140 or 300 grams and that is, uh, sorry, it's a knot pressed so not hot pressed. Okay and it's gummed all the way around so you don't need to worry about anything like that to taping it down or anything. So when you're doing something you're unfamiliar with I would always start with your pencil rather than starting with your pen. So I'm going to do it in ink and wash today. It's, it's a medium that I really like working in and it's really a forgiving medium and nice to work with. So it, before you start drawing it just think about how much space you need to leave on your page if you wanted to put all the shadow in you're going to have to leave quite a depth there to get that in so we'll start with a little hedgehog a little bit further up than halfway so that we've got room to put that shadow in if we want to and her head isn't fitting into a circle as such as more of an oval an ellipse shape there because her head's tilted up towards me and then if we look at the back of a body, it's coming down here. So that's a head and then a body is here. So the, look at the width there compared to that width. It's much shorter. So they're not perfect circles those, but that's where it's all going to fit into. And then if we want to look at some more shapes that we can put in just as a guideline, we've got sort of a triangle that goes from a nose to her ear and across. So if we put that shape in... That's all got also going to help us with our drawing. Place the eyes in that. So a, a little nose is at the end of that triangle there, a little bit further down actually. And you can see a bit of a mouth underneath there. We've got the eyes around here somewhere and then the ears back here. We can't really see much of this one because of the spikes but that gives you a little bit of an indication of where things are. Maybe got a nose a little bit big there. 
So the thing is when you're doing it in pencil with your guidelines you can then come back with your pen and correct things as you go along. So for me that's enough of a guideline, I don't want to do anything else with the pencil so now we'll go on to the pen. So the pen I'm using today is this Unipin fine liner um, and it's waterproof and light fast and it's a size 0.5 and it's a black one. So to get all, we've actually got, she's got, um, I'm going to start at the back and work forward and then my hand's not leaning on anything that I've already done. So I'll start with these spines at the back and they're actually sort of stripey if you can see, they're um, the colours of them. We'll get some of that colour in with the paint. So we maybe want to do little disjointed lines rather than, than a solid line. And we'll start at the back of her head here. So just look at the shapes and the length of some of those spines and they're not all going to be even and there are going to be areas like up here where there's a bit of a gap and there's some going in the opposite direction. Try not to be too even with everything that you're doing. It's going to look more realistic if you get a variety of shapes and sizes in those lines. Now with this pen you are getting a very even shape of the actual line, the width of the line that the pen's making. You can be a little bit more expressive if you used a dip pen or something like that to get some more shapes in your actual lines. And here and there you might want to make them a bit thicker and just put the ends of a spike on like that just to give that little indication of the end there, especially up here where they're a bit more distinctive. And as always, with ink and, and wash, how much detail you do with the pen compared to how much detail you do with the actual watercolour when you put it on is up to you. It's nice to get plenty of detail in, I think, with the pen. And then when you put your watercolours on, you just, just enjoy adding that little splash of colour. So here, look at the shape of where the spines are going. So the shape of the hedgehog is made by where these spines are going. So here, they're going down and over and across away from you and that's making a that shape if you just put them all going backwards like that which will be very easy to do you don't get that feeling that she's a round 3d object because they are actually coming down the side of her down this way and again one or two little edges here and there once you've got the main shape in you might want to start and put a little few little darker areas in just double up on some of those lines just gives us a bit more variety of tone there I'm only using a very fine pen because she isn't actually black she's sort of a browny colour so you don't want real heavy black lines everywhere just be quite gentle with your lines and then when we come up to where, she jo where these spines join the head do a little bit of negative drawing if you see what I mean, because some of these, it's more of a fur on the face than it is a spine. She's probably still quite prickly actually, but um, you want that to be distinct from the rest of her there. So if you look here, it's coming in in sort of a V, so you want to do a little bit of negative shapes there to get that shape of her head. It's coming right down here actually, some of those spines. And then we'll get a, a main features in before we go on to doing those other shapes there. And her ear's quite dark and we want it to stand out because that's going to give her a bit more character seeing her features because we can't really see much of her eyes underneath there. Again, some of those hairs are coming across the ear so if you just leave a few gaps like that it just looks as if the hairs are going off into the ear and similarly over here quite a long way back and you can't really see much of it when you can't see much of it but you want to emphasize it a little bit more just use your imagination to where it is just think about where it is in relation to the other ear particularly when you've got a photograph like this that isn't really showing much up so now if we look at her eye there from the bottom of this ear and across is where the top of the eyes are so I've actually when I've put them in my pencil I've put them a little bit low so that's the great thing now about doing your first initial drawing when you come back 
on top of those pencil lines it makes you look again and then you can correct yourself and there's no detail at all in these eyes I can't see much of the eyes so I'm just sort of blocking in a little bit of shadow there I can just see on this one a little bit of an extra line going around the outside here but that's about all I can see I'm actually gone a little bit too heavy on this one now okay and then we'll go down to the top of her nose which is quite flat across here like I said because if you look down here it's very long we need to get that feeling of it being quite long and these hairs are going to help us do that so all these hairs are going right from her nose across her ears and up in over the top of those spikes and try and keep them a little bit finer and longer than the spikes you did before again we'll be able to distinguish more with the colour when we come to put the colour on and just do it one area at a time so this little area between her eyes so we've got a lot going back but then we've also got it going either way like this and then it's a little bit thicker here okay so I'm just sort of thinking out loud as I'm doing this really because like I said it's something I haven't tackled before so the best way for me to tell you what I'm doing is to sort of just as I'm telling it to myself in my head what I'm seeing so here she's obviously got some little cheeks underneath there because this hair is going around quite in quite a different way to this up here so this side of her eye it's going more or less straight across and out so we've got a little circular shape there which you would think there's sort of some sort of a cheekbone under there and the hairs are coming both this way up and out and it's very fluffy and it's coming out further than the spikes this hair and this is all making the shape of her face so again think about which direction the hairs are going in to get the shape of the animal there so those are sort of on top and then these little ones here are underneath and underneath her mouth and they go right down there okay so we'll do the same on the other side so this shape here is going a, a little bit like she's got an eyebrow going on it's going over that brow bone that's obviously where her eye socket is so think about where things like eye sockets are and where the skull might be lying under there if you're not familiar with something get some of those shapes in that you can see these little areas and also some of the tones it's a lot darker down this side the sun's not quite hitting her in that direction again it's very very tufty over here you've got odd ones going in different directions so I'm trying to move my arm around um, you might want to move your actual page around to get some of these shapes so now we'll look at her nose before we do anything else and she's got like a little shape going on which probably gives her a name of a being like a hog this long snout with this little snouty nose at the end it's like a little horseshoe shape and then you can just about see a mouth under there as well she's actually looking I think because of this eye I don't know what I've done with this eye but she's she's looking a bit mean at the minute and that's the shape of a snout there that you can see and then she's got where her whiskers are attached here so it's a little bit smoother on there not as much hair where her actual nose is and then she's got some whiskers coming off that bit there as well and a little chin sort of thing if you can call it a chin goes down there 
So again, I'm just looking and thinking out loud as I'm seeing where things are. Got that kind of a shape going on there. And it's much darker underneath here where obviously the light's not getting to. And again, we can emphasise that when we put the paint on. But for now, I'll just put a bit more shadow underneath the chin here where the light isn't hitting. So that we distinguish between this shape here, which is above and all this which is un much more underneath because that's underneath where a nose is, is coming out. So get some lines carrying on from that little snouty piece to emphasise that that's above. So like I said, her eyes are looking not great because well, for one thing I've not got them the same size, that one's a lot smaller. She's looking a bit mean. I'm just going to try and alter that a little bit, that's better. On this side, make this one a bit bigger. And also at the moment that's the sort of darkest area and perhaps we need a bit more black elsewhere to even that up a bit. And actually I think a nose needs to be a bit, be a bit bigger. Which also helps because at the moment that eye is very dominant. If we make a nose a little bit bigger, which it, it should be compared to the eyes, it makes that eye less dominant. So once you're happy, more or less, with your drawing, you can get your eraser and get rid of those pencil lines and also think about whether you do want to put the shadow in with your pen. And I think I will actually do a little bit of shadow. Um, coming all the way, it's a very distinct shadow. Actually, what I'll do is I will do that in paint. So I'll just indicate where the shadow's starting there maybe put a few lines down and then I'll do the rest of that in paint. I'm just going to, whilst I'm here, pop one or two of these shapes of these flowers. This is a campanula. It doesn't matter, you can, whatever flower you want to put there. Got a little stem in the centre and I'll just do one or two. Sort of leafy shapes and flower shapes there, but not all of them. Now, as I wanted to keep it very simple today, I'm just going to use the Sennelier travel set of watercolours and one brush. So the brush that I'm using is a synthetic one, it's a round one and it's a number six. If you do want to look at the materials that I use, there is a link down below to my Amazon shop with most of the products I use. But obviously they vary between the UK and America as to what you can get, what's available to you. So some of those are alternatives, but it just gives you a rough idea of the type of things that I use on a daily basis. But um, So I want to keep this simple so to begin with I'm going to wet the whole paper just over this area where the little hedgehog is and down to where that shadow is and it would actually have been easier to do this initial part with a bigger brush but I am aware that some of you may not have loads of different brushes and when you're just starting and you're a beginner this is a good size to get because if you get a good one, a good synthetic brush and you can get a nice tip or a nice point on your round brush you can use it both on its side to put plenty of water on but also on its tip to get a little bit of detail so it's, it is a good sort of size to, to begin with on a pad of this size So, the first thing I'm going to think about really is these flowers in the background and a nice bright blue. I'm just going to drop the colour in there and then later when it's dried I'll come back on top and put extra detail in those flowers. And on the, on the photograph the flowers don't come right up to the little hedgehog but on here I'm going to make them. And this is the thing about working from a photograph is don't do it exactly as the photograph is. Use a bit of artistic license to make a more interesting picture. So I could even put them all down around the other side as if it, she's 
in them because obviously she's just on the tarmac there of, of the pathway. So by putting them all the way around it makes her look like she's much more nestled into the garden. So the second colour I'm going to use is some green for that foliage. It's quite a nice green straight from the pan but as I often do I will just put a little bit of red in that. Red's on the opposite side of the colour wheel to green and it will just make it look a bit more natural. So just dab it in here and there, don't mind about it mixing together with those nice blues. It's going to give you a variety of tone and shape and just let it do its own thing. Put some where you think there might be some more leaves. And right up to that little hedgehog. And then you may want to add a little bit of sunshine rather than just leaving the white for the sunshine. You might want to pop a bit of yellow in at this stage as well. So keep that nice and thick so it's a little bit thicker than the blue and the green and it'll sort of push those out of the way if you want to add that little splash of sunshine to your picture. So it's drying quite quickly today because it's quite a warm day here. So what I'm going to do now is get some more of that blue but make it nice and thick so there's no water in there much at all, just what was already there. I'm going to add that to these flowers. And you'll see I'm not being over fussy about filling in between those lines. It's very impressionistic. And don't forget, if you're new to watercolours, that your watercolours will dry a lot lighter than they go on so at this stage don't panic when things are looking quite dark. So the same thing with the green just here and there I'm going to put some extra thick painting and that's going to make it give us a bit more variety in the tone there as if we've got some sunshine coming through those leaves and petals because the dark area is going to make the lighter areas show up more as it dries. And think about this as well going round him, her or him, because it's white here on these spikes, if you put a dark colour next to them like this, it's going to make those show up more. But don't do it all the way around looking too uniform, keep it nice and loose. So coming further down for this tarmac here, I don't really want to have it tarmac, tarmac. I want to have it more of a soil. So I'm going to use a brown to make it look more gardeny than having the tarmac there. So again, when you're working from a photograph, don't necessarily think you have to do it exactly as the photograph is. Have a bit of a think about it and alter things. And you can see that that paper is drying quite quickly. So just get a damp brush and add some extra water to that very quickly. And further down here where I've not got um, any water on the paper actually you can make this is what we call a dry brush technique where you go across the paper and it just picks up the tooth of the paper and that can give you some nice texture in your watercolour as well. Because it's a very very sunny day we don't want to overdo it with the colour there and I might even pop a little bit of the yellow down and the greens just to bring some of that colour further down to make the whole painting look as if it's together you know in harmony and combined you don't want it to look disjointed so we need to make a dark colour for that shadow so into that brown I'm going to add some of the blue I'm going to use the same blue to make a much darker colour than we've already got there but you don't need to go as dark as we've got on the actual photograph because we want to make it quite a light little picture, very summery. So look at the how far down this shadow comes, quite a long way down and make sure you get this nice shape at the end of the nose. But still try and keep it soft but also we've got those some of the spiky shapes at the end
bit of negative paint in there come all the way down with those spiky shapes it's quite a greeny brown colour that but it's actually turned out to be quite a nice colour When I'm using blue, and I've used the blue of the flowers there, something like an ink and wash, when you're doing something a little bit illustrative and very simple like this, I don't like to overdo it with loads and loads of different colours, so you tend to use the same blues that I've got. So if we look here, we want some shadows of the flowers as well. One or two shapes of shadows in amongst again so that, that it looks very very sunny. If we get the darks in that's going to make the lights show up a lot more as well and you can see it's drying, you can see what I'm putting on there is already dry underneath. So you can do a bit of negative painting here around these flowers, some negative painting around the little hedgehog itself and that's all going to help make him stand out as the focus of the picture. Use all that up making it nice and dark here but you can see that we've still got those other colours from underneath showing through the shadow because the shadow doesn't obliterate everything, we've still got other colours there. So I'm just going to clean these out a little bit and think about the colours of the hedgehog. And really there isn't much colour on there, a little bit of grey and brown. So like I said before, we don't want to be using loads of different colours, so I'll use the same brown that I used before. And this set is just as it was when I bought it, except for I did swap out one of the reds for an extra green, I think it was, or was it yellow? Because there was so many reds. I did do a video on that a while back, um, but it did come with a lot of reds, but they're all very, very nice, to be honest with you, and I do like using them. So he's actually now dried. So what I'm going to do before I put this on is just re-wet him. Now how dry, uh, sorry, how quickly your paper dries really depends a lot on the how warm the room is that you're working in and the time of year and things. So, you know, you will have to tailor your watercolour paintings to that and be aware of how quickly your paper's drying. Always test your paper with the back of your hand so you don't get oil from your fingers on your picture. So if you go like this, you can see, feel if it's still cool, um, it means it's still damp, but he'd actually dried out quite a bit there. And then we're just going to pop some colour into those spikes but leave quite a lot of white. And go right out to where the furthest ones are. Like I said, try and leave as much white as you can in places so that it's nice and light. Might actually take a little bit out here and there. So just with the edge of a tissue. So that's making him look really quite nice and spiky. Then he's got quite a lot of brown sort of in a pattern. He's got here, here and here is that where, where it makes this triangle shape. And that's actually a little bit darker than the brown that's on his back. So in a minute we'll just put some extra colour into that. But actually we don't want to go overboard with the colour on him because it's not that many colours in there. So we'll put some extra brown to make that a little bit thicker. And just where it's darker, pop that in. And like I said when we're doing the flowers this will dry a lot lighter. getting those shadows in and where it's darker is going to make the shape of his head more. And at this stage if you want to just shape some of that that you've put on wet and wet just dry your brush out a little bit and then just tease the paint around the shape of the hedgehog. Don't introduce any more water but just 
if you've got things that you want to just move a little bit or soften just do it with a damp brush you don't want to be introducing any more water at that stage one or two areas are a little bit grey so I'm going to put a bit of the blue into that and a little bit more water that's going to make a bit of a grey blue which is the same colour that we used for the shadow and just introduce it here and there in that little bit of grey because he's not just all brown particularly around his eyes and his nose And I think we ought to leave him at that. I think we could be in danger of overdoing him because we haven't got that detail to work from. And that's probably enough really. I'm just going to we could get a tiny bit more brown. Just pop that there just to distinguish between his head and his body there. And again we can just tease that to where we want it or stop it moving any further than we want it. So when you're working with watercolour wet in wet, it's all about observing it and watching it, where it's going, where it's drying the most, where it's drying too quickly, and where things are flowing out into the other colours that you don't want to. And with shadows, they need to be joined up to the object, really, so they don't look like they're floating. Okay, so I could actually keep going, uh, but with something like ink and wash, like I said, the good thing about it is you're doing your drawing and you're leaving the focus on those lines that you've done with your pen and you, the colours that you're putting on is just to brighten the whole thing up. So have a go with some of your own photographs. If you did want to do a hedgehog, like I said, I'm not sharing this one because it's such a poor photograph, um, but if you go onto pixabay.com, There'll be loads of pictures there for you to choose from. Just put hedgehog in the search bar and you'll find loads of nice pictures of hedgehogs there to work from. So it's worth having a go at that. So look at the shape of the head, the shape of the body and then work into that with your pen, putting those features in the right place. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful and I'll be back again soon with some more tutorials and demonstrations. Thanks for watching and bye for now.